Welcome to Basic Green Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. Hey, by the time that you see this, Steve Wilkes will have been inducted into the Arkansas Drummers Hall of Fame. Yep. Oh. No, no joke. No joke. This guy is a serious jazz drummer, uh, and this this is a testament. You're being honored by your peers, and I just had to I have to brag on you because you're awesome. And you know he is a hall. He is a hall of fame drummer. No joke. So look it up. Uh, but the time you see this, I think the the uh, the induction ceremony is going to be in August, right? Mm -hmm. Middle so, of August. So yeah. by the time you see this, Steve will be a hall of fame drummer. So congratulations. Thank sir. you very much. Well deserved. Thank you. Now onto this beer. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, in other words, that's on the a other transition <laughs> from the heights <laughs> to, to we'll, the depths. To we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Do you want me to tell the story? Yes, tell the story. Okay, so just, in, just launched. So last year in Pittsburgh, we were at Homebrew Con, uh, and we're at club night, and we're walking around, and these two guys, Ken Kazmersky from Chicago, and his son Brian, walk yep. up on us, and they got a backpack full of beer. Mm -hmm. And they say, we've got a beer that you have to try. And yes. we're like, okay, we're okay. kind of used to this by now. This is a, a beer based on the Chicago hot dog. And it's right. got in all the ingredients of a Chicago hot dog in a beer. Mm -hmm. And our initial reaction was... <laughs> <laughs> like the infamous curry beer from about <laughs> 10 years ago. A little bit, a little uh, much is good. So Ken served up the beer, or maybe mm -hmm. maybe Brian served up the beer. What was your reaction to the beer? It's the best beer of the conference. <laughs> it was really good. It was really really good. It and was delicious. shockingly good. Yeah, and so we bragged about this beer, and our longtime friend uh, Greg McGill from Brewocracy in Hamilton, New Zealand. He mm -hmm. owns. He and his wife Alex own uh, the brewery down there. He heard that and he said, I'm coming through the United States. I'm going to be next year. I'm going to be swinging through Chicago as one does. And I want to try that hot dog beer. So can you get me linked up with Ken, the, the hot dog beer brewer? And so I said, yes. Mm -hmm. And can we come too? <laughs> <laughs> so Steve and I went to Chicago. We did a little bar hopping with, uh, with Greg and Alex. And then we met up at Metropolitan Brewing mm -hmm. with uh, Ken Kazmersky, his mm -hmm. son Brian, and some other folks, and we recorded an audio episode. We recorded two audio episodes there, one about the hot dog beer, one with Doug, the owner of, or the brewer at uh, Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, we went to the Ballpark Brew Fest. Uh, and in, I can't remember where it was. I'll Schomburg. Talk, Schomburg, yes. uh, Illinois. Yep. Thank you. And we uh, got to see uh, Ken and Brian pouring the hot dog beer in its natural environment at a, at ballpark. a ballpark. Yeah, in Chicago. In Chicago, well, or, or the Chicago summer. land area. Yeah. So that's the story of this beer. And so you were inspired. I was inspired. And so I brewed, I decided to brew it. And, and so I got the recipe, but of course I can't leave well enough alone, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I I decided to make it as a tincture beer because the in the original beer, Ken actually into the fermenter mm -hmm. put all these ingredients, and you'll talk about those. Yes, all these ingredients into the fermenter and kind of steep them in the beer. Mm -hmm. But you you wanted to go the why did you want to go? <laughs> why did you want to mess with it? So I made the base beer which we'll talk about what that is. But I made the base beer, and then I separately made a tincture of hot dog flavors. And the idea, what I was looking for a couple of things. I wanted to uh, have a maltier, as good as Ken's was, mm -hmm. I wanted to try to have a little more bun. Because <laughs> who doesn't like a big bun? <laughs> I cannot lie. I cannot lie. <laughs> so I wanted to get a little bit bigger bun in there. <laughs> And I didn't want the mess of all the... Sir Brew a lot. Yeah, Sir Brew a lot. 
I didn't want all, I didn't want all that stuff. I didn't want to deal with all the right the jetsum and jets, jetsum, <laughs> That's jetsum, right. jetsum, jetsum. Yeah, whatever. Close enough. <laughs> of all that stuff, so I took all the hot dog beer ingredients, infused it in, in vodka, for six eight weeks, however long it was, and then strained all that and then added it to the base beer at bottling. Okay. So so let's get into the details. Okay. So you brewed this beer over here. Mm -hmm. You brought your system, your high gravity warthog system over right. here, and yours is the smaller uh, sibling. I have of, a 110, 110 volt system. Right, mm -hmm. uh, I've got the bigger system, but um, I couldn't, this is a two and a half gallon batch right. or a 9.5 liter batch. Right. And I can't, on my system, I can't brew batches that small. That's right. Uh, so what you did, was in this batch of beer, you put four pounds or 1.8 kilograms of Golden Promise, eight ounces or 227 grams of Honey Malt, eight ounces or 20, 227 grams of Special Roast, and one pound or 450 grams of Flaked Wheat. You mashed for 150 degrees or 65, uh, Fahrenheit or 65 Celsius for what do we do an hour 90 minutes we went to lunch <laughs> about 90 minutes <laughs> and so we collected the wort and in at the beginning of the uh, 60 minute boil you added half an ounce or 14 grams of northern brewer and then we did no chill we racked the beer into my no chill container and you took it home so what are, where did it what happened after that well so I took it home in your no, no chill you know, uh, container, container, the old thingy, Whew, getting old, <laughs> and uh, and the next day, or it might have been two days. It might take me a couple of days, but um, of course it has to cool. So mm -hmm. it has right. to leave. It left here at boiling hot, right. and then once it cooled for a day or two, and I could get to it, I put it into my um, fermenter. And what yeast did you use? USO5. Oh. I used fermentus USO5. So I didn't feel like I needed any kind of special yeast flavor thing going right. on here. I just wanted a, a very something, something neutral. Clean. And I had some USO5 at the house, so that's what I used. And uh, of course it fermented very well. Um, the beer started at 1059. It ended at 1012. I've got a 6.2% beer. Oh, wow, okay. Um, and I'd be really interested to see what you think so what uh, ingredients went oh, into the into the tincture? Okay, so all of the all the ingredients that go into a, a Chicago dog. I'll put a picture of a Chicago dog that yes. we had at the airport. But at here's, at but here's what I did. Instead of using um, instead of using yellow mustard, I used two ounces of mustard seed. Oh. Instead of using uh, celery salt, I just used celery seed. Uh huh. Because because so, I also had quite a bit of sauerkraut. So I, sauerkraut, mustard, these are the flavors. Sour, right. I, I used some sauerkraut, some mustard, some sauerkraut juice, uh, mustard, dill pickle, uh, and some dill pickle brine. Hot peppers? Hot peppers, the sport peppers, which I want to really talk about those, and you'll see why when we taste the beer. So the sport peppers, uh, the celery flavor, but instead of using celery salt, I used celery seed because I knew there was already a lot of salt. Oh, from the So I didn't want to just keep adding salt and just get saltier and saltier into it. Right. So I use celery seed. I ground the mustard seed and the celery seed in the in the pestle with a vessel. The vessel with a pestle <laughs> ground the celery seed to go into the brew that was true. And uh, I put all of those ingredients, all those hot dog flavors, including about 12 to 15 of the little sport peppers, a little bit of the brine, into this vodka mixture, about two cups of vodka, maybe three cups. I, to be honest, I just filled it up to where it covered all the ingredients. Mm. A couple of big, a friend of mine made some really nice dill pickles. I used a couple of his pickles and they're big and kind of juicy. And so I just crammed those in there and, uh, and I used the green neon <laughs> the relish. Know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't make, I couldn't make <clears throat> that from raw ingredients. So I just squeezed a bunch in and, <laughs> and I have to admit that I didn't, I didn't know what volume of stuff to use because I was not making Ken's recipe exactly. I was right. paraphrasing right. it in a right. way. Right, right. So I just had to kind of paraphrase his recipe, but using all those flavors I thought and hoped uh, into this vodka jar, jar, jar of vodka, uh, <laughs> let it sit for a few weeks and then strained it. And then I had the, had the vodka extract or the hot dog extract, which I added back into the base beer at bottling. Mm. And so, and then I bottled the beer and went on. 
And I added to every bottle of the beer, I added one sport pepper. Oh my gosh. So it's like a, it's like a bottle of tequila. There's a cookie in there. There's a worm in there. One of those has got a worm in it. I'm not seeing it. Oh, maybe we got two. No, one of them does. <laughs> oh, no, that's because we, we got the wrong beers. Oh, that one's got a star on this it. This is a plain beer. Oh, this has a... This has a what about this one over here? Well, they both this this has one in it. Did you, you just see can't it? see it. Now there it is. I see it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It must be small. Yeah. Well, they're they're only <laughs> I, wish, like, I wish I had a nickel. <laughs> they're only not that big. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, it's in there. All right. Okay. So each beer has <laughs> Again, the extract, you, and then there's a, a there's a one. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a sport pepper in each one. Oh, cool. So that's it. So. Let's, we're going to do a little side-by-side -side <coughs> taste here. So we're going to so taste So this the, is the base beer. That's the base beer. Nothing in it. Nothing in it. No tincture, no nothing. No, no nothing. No tincture, nothing. Whoa! Whoa! Hey There's something in there. There's something in there. <laughs> so this is, this goes into uh, our, our... Uh, and this was kind of hot and I drove it over here in a very bouncy car. <laughs> so... <laughs> these are, these are uh, pint glasses from, oh my our, goodness. from our friends at Superior Bathhouse. Uh, brewing in Hot Springs National Park. Right now, here's the thing about this before you taste it. It should be out of balance <laughs> because I really held the hops back. Oh, okay. In anticipation of all the flavor that was going to come in from the tincture. I hope this isn't infected because that shouldn't no, be No, it's that. fine. Okay. I think it's just warm. That's good. Yeah, it's good. So that's the base beer. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing, nothing special. It's nothing special. It's not supposed to be, other than I was hoping to get some breadiness out of it. That's what I was hoping from the, the grain bill. The golden promise, the flaked wheat, the honey malt, the special roast, all should have kind of gone to a bready, crackery place. Yes, I get that completely. So that should be there. But, then, e but even the base, even the space beer, I would, I would drink a pint of that. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not bad. And it's at 24 IBUs. Um, and it, but it's intentionally a little under hopped. That's good. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad yeah, to we've, we've had, say that. We've had, uh, we've sampled three really hoppy beers so far today. This is a nice um, counterpoint mm -hmm. to that. Yeah, that's actually not, actually, it's not no, bad. it's good. Other than sipping it. <clears throat> I've not drank much of these myself. <laughs> Do you have help? Well, <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> well, I, I just mean, I, I mean, I, I made this, what, a uh, bottle a month or so ago, month, month and a half, two months ago, and I barely drank any of it, so it's always kind of a surprise to me, too. Okay, so, so, so now here's, the, here's my version. So okay. they, these glasses are from the uh, Tulsa Craft Beer Invitational in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Cheers to our friends Desiree and Dave of HighGravityBrew.com, uh, which that, that takes place in their parking lot. So this I hope is this the won't foam. No, no, okay. That's no, weird. I, I hope. I no, this one feels on. the bottle feels colder. Oh, oh you got the. <laughs> there went the cookie. <laughs> that kind of scared me. I was like, "What the? Is that a fish?" <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> in, disclaimers. Disclaimers. <laughs> so, this beer. Did not come out how I expected it to. Oh, cheers. And I don't want to spoil, I don't want no spoilers. So James okay. has to taste it. And this is a real reaction. He's never had this. No. I can smell the pepper. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can I can smell either jalapeno, there's a little bit of bell. Definitely. Yeah, very strong pepper aroma. Woo! Woo! Wow, that's spicy. That's that's one of spicy meatball. <laughs> okay, I'm here's the mistake I made. I should, now I'm not saying it's bad because I love it, spicy stuff. It's not bad, but it doesn't taste like a hot dog. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Ken Ken and Brian's beer, it tasted like a Chicago dog. They nailed it. Yeah. I was trying to, again, paraphrase it and do the, here's where I think I made the fatal flaw. I shouldn't have put the individual sport pepper in each bottle. Yeah. That over peppered it. Yeah. It over, it, it's a chili beer, basically. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, and if you, if you told someone as a chili, beer, I brewed a delicious. really spicy chili beer. I hope you like it. Yes. And if they like those kind of beers, they would go, oh, this is great. As a hot dog beer, it's not. No. It just covered that. And, and the thing is, is that in our neck of the woods, I could not get a jar of anything labeled sport pepper. Um. And I uh, naively thought these, I think the, the brand is Trappy, T-R-A-P-P-E. Yeah, right. Trappies, and, and you see them in restaurants around here, and you pour a little of this, the, the vinegar, really, or the brine, mm-hmm. like on your catfish. That's what you use it for. Right. And I thought, well, those will work. And they're way hotter. <laughs> That's a hot, hot, hot pepper. I didn't know that. And I shouldn't, I should have known that, and I didn't. Now, if, if you had served me this beer on its own and said, here's a hot pepper beer that I made, I love it. I think it tastes great. But it's not, it's, it's it, not misses, it misses the mark. So it I doesn't can, fill the brief, as they say. No, it, I, didn't, I did not, uh, con, did uh, not address the brief. Shows. So Ken and Brian are still the, the hot dog beer champions of the world. They absolutely Because are. that beer has, I mean, you can taste, even you can taste like tomato, and you yep. can taste hot, uh, mustard, you can taste relish you can t- all the individual components of a hot dog right. beer right. and listen to the episode i'll put it on the screen again of uh when we went up to metropolitan and you know uh, greg who traveled literally halfway around the world <laughs> not not just to taste that beer but one of the things that he wanted to do uh when he came to this country is taste that beer he loved it we loved it uh doug at metropolitan was okay with it <laughs> Right, I think, and then and then listen to the episode where we went to the ballpark. We got about what fifty percent people liking it mm-hmm. and fifty percent mm-hmm. not. Uh, so it's a controversial beer, but man, we we still love it. I love this, but for a different reason. It's it, not a hot dog. beer. It's not a hot dog beer. It's I, a hot pepper beer, mm-hmm. but man, it's right up my alley. I think it's it great. is a little more complex than if you had just the flavor of the pepper. I mean, because because I can get a little sauerkraut, I get a little of the other flavors in there, but. But the, the chili just covered it up. Yeah, they're hiding. It's hiding everything. And so I probably won't do this. Maybe maybe next summer. I want to brew it again because I because I didn't accomplish my goal. Right, right. On the other hand, I'm kind of hot dog beer it out. <laughs> yeah. So and, and for those fans of, this, of the audio podcast of this topic, and the video podcast, I swear this is the last we'll talk yeah, about. Yeah, we will not do this. <laughs> this is the last you'll hear of hot dog beer for a long time. But... We've, we've loved talking about it while we... Well, it's fun. Around. And it really made me think about the style of beer that it really is. So if you were going to enter a beer like this, you'd enter it as a spice beer. Or a specialty beer. A specialty beer. beer. And I really... you know, And, and nowadays, things like the, the pickle beers, the dill pickle beers, um, those are all kind of in fashion right now. And I was thinking about right. the etymology or the, the history of these kinds of beers. And to me, they kind of go back to the, the goza the G O G O S E, right? Um, salty, so, a little salty. A little, the the little brackish tart. water, a little tart, a little salty, a little mm-hmm. savory. Yeah, it's it's kind of that's the the mother of all of these beers, in my opinion. Now, somebody else smarter right. with no. more history than me can can school me, but that's where these come from. And in that text, in that in that con, uh, constrate, constrate, it you know in, in that place, this beer fits <laughs> right. And so, and so are the dill pickle beers, and so are the, the crazy chili beers and stuff. Um, so it's just that idea of the little saltiness, the little savoriness. It works at that level. But Ken is the master of the hot dog beer. Right. I was a challenger. <laughs> I, I failed miserably. <laughs> no! Well, at, at I, the hot dog I, I mean, you failed at the brief. I failed at the brief. But you did make a good beer, the and beer's... now this makes me want a hot dog. Because this would completely go with It would definitely with uh, a brat. Oh my God! This would be killer. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's what it really goes with, because this is how I salvage the beer. Make a michelada out of this. You make a michel. You add some lime juice to this and some tomato juice. It is killer good. It's a perfect michelada. We got V8 in the in the cabinet, so I'm telling you. All right, that's what All we're right. gonna do right now. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Good job. Good, brave attempt, but you know. You take you take you take your wins when you can, and this right. is a win, and that it's a good beer in a different way. Right, 
If I was really interested in it, I'd brew it again and again and again, and I think I would get because I'm on the right path. But ma maybe we won't talk about it. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Mine's right. the word. All right, everybody. Uh, go back and watch everything, listen to everything that we talked about the hot dog beers, and uh, brew it yourself and see what you can do. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Happy brewing. Come and visit us online at basicbrewing.com. You can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on homebrew. You can also find our DVDs and our Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. This is good, though. It is. It is good. It, it's it's a weird good. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. blend it with the original, the un, the base beer, mm -hmm. and tone it down. You gotta a cut bit. it a little bit like mineral spirits. <laughs> <laughs> or Rocky in the corner. Yeah. But you know, it actually. Mm. You know, like I got the bun. It's good. 